Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Difficult decisions in one of Metro Detroit's wealthiest suburbs says the Gross Point School Board votes to authorize layoffs. The points have seen consistent declines in enrollment and it's showing no sign of letting up next year. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill and I'm Christy McDonald in for Devin Skillian tonight. Now dueling budgets are up for a vote and they do include teacher cuts. Our Mara McDonald is live in Gross Point Farms tonight and Mara that proposal appears to have a majority of the board behind it at this point and looking at about 4.6 million in cuts. That's right, Christy. I mean, and let's be clear, no final budget decision was made tonight, but it is clear that no matter what budget they go with here, that layoffs seem to be a certainty, which is why they authorize them tonight. Let me take you through it. The points are a small community and nowhere is that more keenly felt than at the school board meetings where personalities and politics is the undercurrent that runs through everything. I just wanted to briefly encourage you to think about people over projects as you consider the budget in your final vote on June 20th. And when I say people over projects, I mean the people like the students in this district, the teachers in this district, the counselors in this district. A majority of the board appears to support a budget which cuts $4.6 million. That would result in both high schools losing five teachers, but that's a moving target since some teachers would see their hours cut. This year, I was notified that I am being reduced to a point nine one six after 17 years of teaching because of the compressed special schedule. After 17 years, I will not be full time. Two fifth grade teaching jobs would be cut in two K through four teaching jobs, as well as administration jobs like those in communications. They eliminate the central office and they replace everyone aligned with their thinking, not the community. And then they target diversity and inclusivity program and actively target the curriculum. Gross Point has been rating its fund balance, which has downgraded its bond rating. Trying to dig out of the hole is getting real pushback. Back here alive, no matter how many people are laid off here, there are going to be lingering bad feelings. And to give you an idea of how polarized the situation has become here, what should have been a bright spot at the beginning of this meeting, a nonprofit offering up $600,000 to the district for things like new playground equipment or a new scoreboard, were treated as though it was um, a really polarizing issue by some of the board members simply because of who that nonprofit is and because they have connections to some board members and not other board members. Ultimately, they did uh, vote to accept all that $600, but the comments were very pointed. It's just where the discussion level is in this district right now. We're live in Gross Point Farms. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, really difficult, Mara. A lot of decisions to be made. Thanks so much. Two survivors of the campus shooting at Michigan State University in February are taking steps to sue the school. A total of eight students were shot in Berkey Hall. Three of them died from their injuries. Pamela Osborne joins us live with the steps they're taking before they can file that lawsuit. Pamela. Kimberly, that's right. So before a lawsuit is filed here, a notice has to be filed by attorneys, and that's what's happened here in this case. Attorneys representing two students injured in the shooting on Michigan State's campus have filed notices of injuries and allegations of building defects at Berkey Hall. Seconds after being shot clean through the lung, two entrance wounds and two exit wounds, laying in a state of shock that will never leave my mind and forever haunt me. A month and a half after he was shot in his classroom at Berkey Hall, Forbush spoke from the Capitol steps at a March for Our Lives rally. The classrooms in Berkey Hall did not have locks on them, just like at least 1,300 other classrooms across campus. Our doors were wide open for anyone to enter if they so choose. Forbush urged lawmakers to enact gun violence prevention measures to protect other students, other people from the fate he and seven others suffered that day. The university has since announced that they will be adding locks and updating security measures at night. But we cannot forget that it was too late for Alexandria, Ariel, Brian, myself, and the four others wounded in this senseless act. 
Now that the notice has been filed, MSU has time to investigate before a lawsuit can even be filed here. I did reach out for attorneys representing those two surviving students. They declined to comment at this point in time, but the spokesperson for MSU is speaking out. Here's a quote by Dan Olson. He said MSU has been engaged in conversations with the families of those we lost and those injured to identify ways to provide ongoing support, and we are committed to keeping those lines of communication open. Certainly the beginning of a very long process, not just for those victims who are still recovering for their injuries, but for what's next in this legal process. For now, reporting live, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Yes, Pamela, thank you. Two teenagers are in custody after police say the pair attacked a Detroit police officer. Take a look. This is video of the attack that happened on Saturday at the BP at Joy Road in the Southfield Freeway. You can see one person reach for the officer's gun, which starts a wrestling match with the officer. Police say the two suspects are juveniles and they turn themselves in to officers today. Chief White says the attack will not change how policing is done in the city. It's unjustifiable. It's illogical. Uh, and these two young men made a horrible decision. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to police these streets constitutionally. Uh, anybody that violates the law, you know, we've been very clear about. We're not going to apologize for locking folks up that are carrying guns and hurting folks. And, 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 and our officers do an amazing job at doing that. Police say they have not found the gun that one of the suspects was seen holding in the video. The motive for the attack is also still unknown. Donald Trump in Miami tonight, just hours before a historic appearance in a federal courtroom. The former president indicted by a grand jury on charges related to more than 100 secret do uh, government documents discovered in his Mar-a-Lago estate after he was out of office. It'll be the second time since April he will face a judge on criminal charges. Former President Trump arriving tonight at the airport in Miami. President Trump! later greeted by a crowd of supporters in South Florida ahead of his historic court hearing tomorrow. The former president, now a federal criminal defendant, defiant in the face of a 37-count indictment. The ridiculous and baseless indictment of me by the Biden administration's weaponized Department of Injustice will go down as among the most horrific abuses of power in the history of our country. Writing, hard to believe that the leading candidate by far of the opposition party got indicted. This is strictly third world. And vowing if elected to appoint a, quote, real special prosecutor to investigate President Biden, an appointment he as president would not have the authority to make directly. Tonight outside the courthouse in Miami, security preparations underway for the nation's most high profile defendant. A special counsel alleging Mr. Trump mishandled classified documents and obstructed efforts to retrieve them. Them, saying boxes of classified information were kept in Mar-a-Lago storage rooms, a ballroom, even a bathroom, and alleging at one point the former president suggested to lawyers hiding or destroying the documents. Elected Republicans largely rallying around Mr. Trump, even his presidential rivals, and blasting the Biden Justice Department. I think there needs to be one standard of justice in this country. You can't protect Democrats while targeting and hunting Republicans. President Joe Biden, that has a number of classified documents sitting in a garage. The idea of equal justice is not playing out here. But not Mr. Trump's former Attorney General Bill Barr well, calling the charges said, serious. Is, if even half of it is true, then he's toast. And it's very, very damning. And this tonight from former Trump UN ambassador and current GOP candidate Nikki Haley. If this indictment is true, if what it says is actually the case, President Trump was incredibly reckless with our national security. Donald Trump is the first former president to face federal charges. He plans to remain in the 2024 presidential race. The Detroit Fire Department signs an emergency contract to make sure there are enough ambulances available in case of emergencies. DFD is entering into a contract with Universal Macomb Ambulance Service to add 11 private ambulances to the streets. Now, when you combine that with the fire department ambulances, there will be a record 40 ambulances on the road this summer. The contract begins this week and runs through September. A Macomb County pilot is scheduled to face a judge on federal charges for allegedly sexually assaulting a 15-year-old girl. 71-year-old Rex 
Phelps is accused of assaulting the girl during flight training at the Ray Community Airport. He's accused of inappropriately touching her and kissing her in the middle of flights. Phelps used to be a teacher at Dakota High School. He's also facing felony state charges. Tomorrow's hearing will decide if there's enough evidence to go to trial. All right, it's something we've needed, mm -hmm. and now we're going to get a good dose of it this week. And my lawn is looking terrible. Chris, we're talking about rain moving back into the area, so let's get over to Kim Adams with a look at how much we can expect, Kim. Well, we're not going to get enough to make those lawns nice and green, but it is going to be an improvement over the next several days. 59 right now in Mount Clemens, mid 50s in Pontiac, 51 in Ann Arbor and only 53 in Howe. So a chilly night here in Metro Detroit. Tomorrow we start the day with a little bit of rain and temperatures in the 50s, almost like a fall morning for us. 60 degrees by 10 a.m. and in the afternoon we warm to a high of 67. That's quite a bit below our normal high, which is now 79. We will see rain tomorrow. Tomorrow, but it will be off and on, so not an entire washout tomorrow, but definitely plan for a little bit of light rain. Temperatures will be on the uptick over the next several days. In fact, by Saturday, we finally make it back to the normal high, which will be 80 degrees. I'll time out the rain for you. Also, we'll talk about Father's Day. We do have a chance of showers that day, and we'll include that in the forecast coming up.